Dan, why are you so excited? Oh, well, while I was fetching tools, I think the boy found some holes. Three holes, to be exact. <laughs> Woo! We got it. We got a tight squeeze to get back there, though, to dig them. We do. Yeah. You should film the squeeze. Digging the West with Bottleneck. Yeah, real tight squeeze here. Two, three total. Three total, okay. We each got a hole. <laughs> Somebody's excited. Actually, Don't trip. Act technically four, but. Oh. Watch your foot. Move your foot back. Whoa. Hey, well, don't throw it. Oh. Whoa. Down the labyrinth. Okay, so what? short shovels. Oh my god. Short shovels. Pico. Try to hit that while uh well he's throwing the shovels. <laughs> yeah. The Shawshank okay. Redemption style. I'll go get more tools. <laughs> okay. Don't forget yourself, you're the biggest tool of all. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh, Oh my god. Oh, oh, bottles. Bottles. Thank you. I'll be digging right there. Wow, that's a big bush on the end of my um. car. <laughs> this is going to take a little work, isn't it? You know how to work it, Danimal. <laughs> Here, speaking of which, work it. Yeah. Concrete went up my nose. <laughs> Where is that? Up your ass. Going downtown. <sighs> oh, damn, there's that brown gold. Brown gold. All right. Down to it. Spillover trash pit next to the actual hole. Probably just a slick 90s or something. Maybe. The gas light? Maybe? It's the right size, but I doubt it. 
stuck against the plate or something. Oh, it is a it is a gas light. It's a damn light. Well, that's cool. It's kind of a weird sized one. Is it a gas light? It's a Danny Arnold. Oh, <sighs> ammonia manufactured by San Francisco Gas. I haven't yeah. dug one of those in a long time. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, this layer's older. Interesting size too. Very cool uh, gas light Western ammonia bottle manufactured by. San Francisco Gaslight Company. Get a nice. it's just Beautiful. Some nice bubbles, texture. Just out of a little spillover. A little spillover okay. trash pit next to the privy. Cool. We're going to make this a little bigger, aren't we? <sighs> yeah, I think we're going to need to. Well. <laughs> so how far did it go this way? I don't know, actually. I'll have to probe Here, it. let's probe this way. 1920. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Dan. Oh, boy. Well. This oh, one's 1870s. Couldn't tell ya. Yeah, Broken IXL though. Oh. Where's that tall, that tall thing you just had? It's yo mama. No, what is that? How do I know? Complete with a stopper. Yeah, it's a chemical bottle with a stopper. Very cool. Yeah. You got bed bugs. Oh, nice. Lion's powder. What color? Amber? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Nice. Lions. 70s one without the rolled lip. <laughs> Bed well, bug sure destroyer. Gets older. Well, you'd think it would if it's 20s on top. I think that privy's in the 20s around here. Oh my god, yes, it's only a piece. Oh, I thought I had a pipe running right over where I was going to do this hole. And I didn't know if it was a gas line or was gas trapped inside. Got really lucky though. It's only a piece. Oh, oh man. I was like, am I gonna go under it? Am I gonna? Oh, what a relief. CD. Dan. What is it? World's relief. World's relief. That's a relief. Oh, Dan, you finally scored. Dude, I was relieved right when he found a world's relief. What? Dan. Dr. J.J. McBride. It's about time. Dan finally found a nice one. It's only been about a decade. It's good. It's goody. Yeah. Menstruation. You need to men menstruation? What did you say? So this is a, a really notorious quack doctor from the Old West, and his doc his name was Doctor J J McBride, and he made a he made King of Pain. That was one of his remedies, and this one is the world's Where you relief. Hey, Kyle, how's it going? Let's see, Let's see that. Oh, you want to see it so yeah, bad, don't you? Daddy. Oh, applied top. Don't lose it. Oh, 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 oh. Here, just, no, just grab it. Grab it, man. I love doing that. I'm such an asshole. Ah, eat it. That's a goodie. Right after the bot. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm just going. Beautiful. Beautiful. Dr. J.J. McBride never could stay in one place for very long. As a traveling medicine salesman in the 1800s, he was used to life on the road. And this lifestyle paid well. Born George McBride Lawrence, by 1860 he was calling himself Dr. J.J. McBride 
and advertising his alcoholic herbal remedies in newspapers on the East Coast. The next decade brought McBride across America, selling his elixirs from Louisiana, Pennsylvania, to Kansas, South Carolina, and Minneapolis, before arriving in San Francisco in 1869 and setting himself up in the Orleans Hotel on Post Street, where he immediately began receiving patients, which were all no doubt prescribed his cure-all product, King of Pain, that he claimed would dispatch everything from coughs and fever, to soreness and rheumatism, to depression and hair loss. McBride was a heavy gambler by night and a showman by day, performing theatrics and peddling his medicine to druggists and people on the street wherever he went. He even managed to get the Pacific Glassworks in San Francisco to start blowing glass bottles with his name and product embossed into the glass, forever immortalizing his legacy. One newspaper account describes McBride. His hair is dark and waving and a good deal longer than any Cayuse Indians that ever scalped a missionary. He wears a hat with a brim like an umbrella and a dress coat that almost sweeps the pavement. In 1875, on a snake oil peddling trip to Nevada, McBride violated a local anti-quackery statute and promptly disappeared before being held accountable. Soon after, a rumor surfaced that he had been shot dead outside a gambling hall while traveling back east. A rumor, probably of his own creation, that was quickly dispelled when he returned to Nevada a short time later. A Nevada newspaper describes the event. There passed down Virginia Street this morning an old familiar figure, which we recognized as the once dead, but still famous, Dr. J.J. McBride, King of Pain. Well do we remember first seeing that long-tailed coat, peg-top pants, and wide-brimmed black sombrero shadowing his long and luxuriant locks, glossy and black as a raven's wing. It was in San Francisco some five years ago, and equally well do we recollect the style in which he dashed around that city in his baroche, drawn by four milk-white steeds and guided by a charioteer of the color of ebony. He was the wonder of the West, no tales of his miraculous cures were too incredible to be believed and reported until when, after gathering in a fortune from his dupes, he returned east and was shot dead in a gambling fracas on the line of the Union Pacific Railroad. At least, it was so reported. Now we have heard of him being arrested at Eureka and held under bail to answer to that charge of quackery under the law lately passed in this state to abolish that practice. Reno, however, did not have the honor of his company long, for he departed silently on this morning's train for Truckee. At a certain point, McBride became so well known for his King of Pain product that he began calling himself King of Pain, even signing letters as such. Before his death in 1878, ironically of a long-term medical condition which was most likely consumption, McBride, who was by no means a poor man at the time, boasted of selling 45,000 bottles of his medicines in San Francisco alone, and one million bottles in the previous two years. So you could say that as much as J.J. McBride got around, his bottles got around even more, and continue to be unearthed all over the West to this day. All right, so here we have some of the broken items that have come out of that layer of that hole. Got a Hostetter's stomach bitters, very popular in the day. This is an olive oil. This is pretty generic whiteware china, but this is older stuff with those um, marks on them, 1870s. That's, uh, that's Dan Gleaner. That's an English um, gin bottle, probably. Um, pretty uh, typical, you know, stemware and white china stuff. 
English ironstone. Lots of that. You see that in almost every privy you dig. Here's a Jamaica ginger bottle hangover cure. These are Hawk wines from Germany. They have a cool pusey color to them. Um, this is an extract, cooking extract, kind of a gothic shape flavoring extract. And there's a tumbler for liquor. Drink the gin. This is a chow chow food bottle with an applied top. Um, this is all coming from the bottom layer. It's a kind of a cool rolled lip drinking glass of some kind, maybe a jelly jar. Here's a shaving mug. A chunk of lime to suppress the odor of the privy. There's an aqua barrel mustard, very early, 1870s. There's a Western Sixth in a nice color, nice colored one. Here is a pouring pitcher, like a gravy pitcher. Beautiful. There's some tack, some of this stuff we can glue, kind of have nowhere to put everything, so we're just kind of putting it over here. Yeah, that's kind of a, your bottom layer there. Huh. Oh, that's really cool. Look at that. I gotta put a pad down because you're because some of this stuff is hitting other stuff, even though it's already broken. Let me throw it out. That is amazing. Look at that gold leaf shaving mug. Oh my gatos. That is a beautiful gold leaf. Wow, clay. Whoa. Pink inside. Oh my god. Rocks inside. That's random. That's a Amazing, amazing design. Right there. There's the IXL top, great applied top, IXL. Huh. Just to give you some inspiration while you're trying to get down below your yeah. 1920s. Yeah. Danimal. Wenzel, wait, hold on. You gotta film it. I know it's annoying. You have to film it. Nice top on it, too. Wenzel. That's a Jamaica ginger applied top, 1870s, San Francisco, Western. Underneath the old iron wharf. Nice. Beautiful. Thank you. Dan still in the 20s. <laughs> I'm opening up mine. Unknown age, as of now. That would be nice. Yeah, I think you're gonna be fine. Yeah. Wow, I think that was a Clydesdale on steroids. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> is that really for pulling a horse? No. Oh. Big piece of metal. Got my hopes up that you had a cool relic. Oh, I know. Go back to the 1920s. Nerd. Oh, yeah. green burst top, huh? That's a greeny one. It's got some green. Western. Burst Top Ink. Getting into the upper layer, same layer as he had over there. You have to be really careful because there's like trash already in this upper layer. What the hell is that? It's... Yeah, and you know, the ammonia was in the layer that he had over there. Busted through a maltine extract, malt extract. Unfortunately, just the first bottle you encounter is usually the most. The one that's in biggest jeopardy. Let's see if there's anything else in this upper trash layer. Oh. Let's see the edge of the plate, shall we? Turn of the century, that mark. Hmm? 
no bots so far, but I've been irradiated by uranium glass. Ah, yikes. Looks like a turn of the century canary glass. Maybe it's older though. New York mustard, <laughs> Charles Golden. <laughs> Speaking of mustard, first blood. <sighs> Part dues, mustard. There's Charles Golden himself. Very prolific barrel mustard. We have ourselves, we have ourselves an embossed med. Uh oh, I know which one that is. <laughs> Who can guess? Okay. The liver of the cod. The cod of the liver. The Scott's emulsion. Oh, with lime and soda. Well, at least it's older than Dan's hole. <laughs> what? What is it? It's getting older. It's getting older. What is that thing? It's a nice flask. What? <laughs> but I was I was enjoying making fun of your 1920s hole. Yeah, look at the top on it. This is an old hole. What the hell? This is. <laughs> Holy shit! That's, I that's 80s. I, mean, I just pulled up a 7-Up just above it. Where's the 7-Up? Well, here, no, this up. actually, oh, that's this came... Oh, that's 7-Up. Well, no, 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 I did pull up a 7-Up, too. Like There's the part of it. This was or? right above it. What the... Weirdo. Well, this is a throwback. I don't know. Hey, well, let me know if there's anything else down there. Well, now I'm inspired now, because I'm down... I'm down now. This is like... We're down five. Let me know if you expose anything cool. Yeah, I will. I will. Okay. See the see the wall? So I'll film it. People want to see it. Okay? Yeah, this is a Don't corner. Don't let him down, Dan. Don't let him down. Oh, no, I won't. What do you got, Danimal? I'll show you. So you take your ass and Wow. What is that? Isn't is that, that just some stupid German turn mold thing? Yeah, uh, it might be. What? The soda. It's not blob soda. That's what Dan said. What? Well, initially. Pop it out. What are you doing? German turn mold. Weirdo. Okay. I'm not used to digging new holes, so you would know better than uh, I. Here it goes. Oh, wait, wait. Move your entire body so that. Just a second. Um... <laughs> See it? Yeah. Where? Well, it's got a nice top on it. <sighs> Man, it's a long son of a bitch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's one of those aqua ones. Those are beers a lot. Is it German? No, be top. no it's not the green German one I was thinking of. Well, we're definitely older down there. Yeah, it's not. You know, not 20s. <laughs> there you yeah, go. I, mean, I saw that's got a really interesting top. It fooled me. You have a really interesting top. That's a blobby dobby. Yeah. That's a dirty Danny. Little boo boo say he cannot reach no further, you know, in Bottle Cave. Cave. Izzy's bottles. Cave in the size of the universe. Oh man, this is kind of cool. What the combination pocket syringe? 1870s, 1880s. Probably an STD cure. still see some of it in there. That almost looks like opium tar. Dan forgot something else. Hey, Dan. Enjoy the journey. Thanks. So far, these trash layers along the property lines right here, as opposed to a couple feet inward where the pits are, are 
more interesting almost, or just as interesting. Huh. Here we have a Koenig. I'm hoping it's colored. Let's see. It kind of looks dark a little bit. You can't really tell. Very hard. The dessert, the dessert, the dirt is deceptive. Oh, oh. Colored with patina though. Koenig. Exploding with color. Yeah, it is hard. You want to hold one? What the hell is that thing? Decorative glass? Might not be a bot. Decorative. Yes. <laughs> Look at this bot right under this building foundation footing thingy. Demon Olive Oil, Olive Company, Oroville, California. It's different. <laughs> Fluted shoulders. on the top of this pool. What is this, man? What the hell is that? Ancient. That is an ancient demijohn. Whoa. Wow. Western demijohn. Ancient 70s. That's nice sea glass, sea bass. This tree that Dan was humping earlier is really in the way. Holy crap. Holy crap, I'm getting 70s pieces out of this thing. Western Cathedral Pickle. Not gothic, but definitely Western blown. What the funk is this thing? The old, bleh, wine. <clears throat> I was hoping there's a green whiskey or something. Okay, let's see what that is. Oh my mm. God, we have ourselves an IXL without the circle. Really? <laughs> oh, oh boy. <laughs> I've never dug an IXL without the circle. Ooh. Wow. Look at that honker. Look, you can see stuff inside of it. So it's, it's at least hole up to the shoulder. Yeah. But we have to get past the shoulder. Yeah. That's the last test. Go lightly. Because this is a hollow void. That's a bot. A void of a bot in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, you fucker. Broken. Up to the shoulder. Let's pull it out anyway. God, that's a stanker. Still haven't found one. Maybe there's a hole in next to it though. Gotta dig carefully. Oh man. Yeah, there's there's clunks underneath it. What broke it? Oh, look at the bubbles. You can see the crudity in it already. Oh, God. Damn it. Dirty Dan. Dirty Danimal. Oh. Hold on, let me get a good shot of it. Sent the Barney. Oh, no circle. No circle. The early IXL with the curvy oars. Ugh. Ugh. It's a lot better than that other one we found here with Well, Puff. you got the right age on this hole. Wow, that's nice. Oh my god. Let's see the base. Show the base. Wow, 
That's bubblicious. Yeah, that would have been a specimen. Those are so hard to find because they're so big. Ugh. What, late 60s, early 70s? Yeah. That's a nice one. Good age. Unbelievable. Puts oh, inside it. Oh, that oh. stupid shot glass broke it. Oh, bastard. That's an old painting. You can hear noises. Look at that character of the glass. Mm -hmm. Let me see it. The way you're doing. See it? You can yeah, see it? Right, right here? Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, this drives me nuts, those bottles. Let's stand it. Looks like we have a little Johnny Hole. I just threw plates and stemware and broken cathedral pickles and bitters bottles over here in the late 1860s. Damn, partying guy. It's probably German. Lots of bitters. The bitters. Oh, 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 that hurts. Cathedral pickle bottle broken. There's the gothic window with the flower design. Cool. Lamp chimney with flowers painted onto it. Fancier stuff. Stemware thing, goblet. Hmm. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, look at that. This guy, this guy's living large, buying nice stuff, you know, drinking nice stuff. And then breaking it. Uh, God. Green, unembossed, bitters bottle. Oh, there, yeah, there's the... Oh, that's a slug plate. All right. Um, it's part of the mold. I was a drunk German drinking bitters, breaking everything. No party would be complete without the Plantation X. <laughs> Yeah, great stuff in here. This guy is just smashing everything. Even the champagnes are broken. That's when you know. That's when you know you got problems. Look at that. The big clunker wines are broken. Uh, shot glasses. This guy was drinking and stanking. He was drinking, and he was nothing. The snuff, I say. There you go. He threw something away whole. His snuff bottle. Jerry got a snuff. Huh. Look at what just fell out of the wall when I was filling in. It's just kind of. My stupid phone died, so, um. Here's the bottle that I found right at the end when I was filling the hole in. It was in the upper layer, that layer that supported the ammonia bottle. It says, lactopeptine for all digestive ailments. So it's probably a little miniature pill bottle, kind of like bromo seltzer or something, but maybe more potent because it came in a miniature bottle. And now it's time for a special bonus video. How to identify a historical Chinese trash layer in the American West. People from all over the world came to California in the early days of the gold rush to try their luck at mining, including thousands of Chinese. By the late 1800s, there was a large population of Chinese permanently settled in the American West. Typical Chinese occupations in the West included shoe repair, laundry services, as well as working as a servant or cook. Chinese were also meticulous scavengers and would pick up trash and return and reuse anything they could. Hence why Chinese trash layers can sometimes be very sparse. 
So what are some clues to look for when digging a historical trash deposit that could indicate that you're digging a Chinese person's garbage? Let's start with the basics and then move on to the weird stuff. Number one. Here's a standard mid to late 19th century glazed rice bowl with a hand painted blue floral design over bluish white tint. Number two. This is a Chinese clay opium burner. A long pipe would be attached to this bowl through which the smoke would be drawn. Number three, hair lotion bottles. In the Chinese Confucian value system, nice hair is highly coveted and considered as important as the body itself. It had high political and social meaning and it was considered taboo to cut one's hair or let it go unkempt. Therefore, expect to find a lot of hair lotion and shampoo bottles in a Chinese trash layer. Number four, the Chinese often repurpose things, including their bottles. If you find any bottles that weren't originally used for, say, bluing, a fabric whitener, but that have traces of a bluish purple residue inside them, it's likely that these bottles were used to store homemade bluing at a Chinese laundry. Number five, Chinese loved the Haas, baby. Now, I don't have any solid proof this is true, but from my experience in seeing a lot of historic Chinese trash, the Chinese used and threw away a ton of Hostetter's Stomach Bitters bottles. It makes sense the Chinese love this stuff because back home in China, bitter medicinal herbs were a popular medicine and were often consumed in the form of tea. Hostetter's bitters was also cheaper and readily available to families who didn't have a lot of money to burn. So the brand appealed to the poorer groups of people in America. Number six. If a Sanborn map in the area where you found the trash deposit is labeled Chinese wash ho, AKA Chinese wash house, AKA Chinese laundry, then you know you're onto something. Bonus, bonus video. What to do with unwanted bots. Oh, what a beautiful day in the woods. A beautiful day to dig a hole. Of course, every day is a beautiful day to dig a hole. But why is Bottle Ned digging this hole? It's not actually to find bottles. No, it's actually to dispose of bottles that I don't want that I can't bear to throw into the garbage can. This is true, right here. There's a bunch of junker clunker bot. Damaged, most of it's just damaged, you know, or generic crap that I find. Now these bottles have been rescued from dirt that was being destroyed and disturbed by big equipment on uh, different sites or when someone is about to build a, some, put some utilities in or put a pool in. So Bottle Ned's done his duty and rescued the objects and recorded the context on his video making machine. But what's left to do with all this damn refuse? I mean, I don't want to break this and turn it into sea glass. It's too intact, but I can't bear to throw it away into the landfill where it's going to get broken. So the solution is dig a hole in the middle of the woods and bury it. That's right, bury the precious historical objects. So the way I go about it is I'll choose a place away from a big tree so you don't get roots. And um, in some relatively soft ground, you don't wanna do this in the, in the dead nuts summer because then you're just gonna be fighting rock hard ground and you gotta save your digging strength for finding bottles, obviously. Um, so, this is some nice softer soil at springtime still. So it's, it's pretty soft to dig in. And uh, you just gotta make sure it's a place that's not gonna erode away into a, a creek anytime soon because you don't want your bot to be destroyed anyway and all your, your sacred weird bottle burying in the woods ritualistic activity to be all for nothing. So yeah, you just... Um, dig a hole where it's just going to be there for about uh, 10 trillion, 47 billion years or so. And then probably no one will find it, but at least it'll be 
in existence still on the planet. So that's the important thing. That's what we want. We want it to exist. Too much crap and plastic everywhere. We want these bots to live on, man. So yeah, oh, make sure the cars on the road above you can't see you. Because if somebody sees you, they might think you're doing something weird. Um, like nefarious, burying a body or something, you know, whatever most people think. If they see you digging a hole, ooh, he's burying a body. So, yeah, that's about it. You know, we got some cool stuff in here, but it's just, uh, don't have room for it. It's kind of generic. There's a, a blob beer. It's just not quite patinaed enough, you know, it's just amber and shitty, but it's from the 1880s. You know, what am I gonna do? Recycle it? <laughs> that would be crazy. That'd be cra that's crazy talk. I'm not gonna throw that away, recycle it. <sighs> Hell no. Nah. See the dilemma here and see why this is such a great solution? Okay, now that we've got a nice earthy hole down there, I got it about three feet deep. Nice depth, you know, no animals are gonna dig it up. It's not gonna erode anytime soon out of the uh, hillside. Oh, another thing, whatever you do, do not dig a hole and bury bottles on public land. Trust me on this. You will, if a, if, a, if a ranger catches you digging on public land, you have a bunch of antiques, they're just gonna think that you found them here. And then they're gonna fine you thousands of dollars and possibly send you to jail. Trust me, I know. Um, anyway, um, so now we're just gonna gently place these bottles down here very carefully. Not gonna break them, obviously, that would defeat the purpose. Just gonna bury them down there for the next 47 trillion billion zillion googleplex forever plus a day years. Ah. And then you put a little dirt, a little dirt over those, a little layer, you know, you, you create a layer. And then, and then it's a little buffer so you can put some more, some more on top of that. Huh. You know, more. Just like so. And there they lay. Never to see the sun again, at least for the next 47 trillion billion plus forever and a day, Googleplex. Ah, <sighs> profound. And relaxing. Hmm. Never shall you see the sun. <laughs> Oh, and just remember to cover up really well. Good trick is to get those leaves. Get those leaves and grass back over. See, looks natural. No one would notice. No one will ever notice. CSI will never find me. Ha ha. Ooh, a little more on that side. Yeah. There you go. Oh, natural. Look at that. It never happened. Ta-da!